The cafeteria problem is a common problem you will probably see in your coding career, either in interviews or in tests or just when you're doing some coding puzzles for fun. This is an example of the problem that can be found on Meta's career site. They have a bunch of puzzles out there that you can do for fun. Uh, and then this example is just an iteration of the common cafeteria problem. So you have a bunch of seats in a cafeteria and these seats have constraints. You know, people can't sit next to each other because they're in a pandemic. Uh, you know, um, uh, there are already people in seats. Uh, sometimes people want to sit next to each other. They need to be grouped. But in this example, the number of seats available is 10. And there's something called a social distancing factor, K, which means that people have to be at least one seat away from each other. And then there's also the number of butts already in seats, the number of people already seated at seats 2 and 6. And these are labeled 1 to 10, not 0 to 9. Um, but with that information, let's just draw what this looks like. So there's a social, uh, social distancing factor of 1, and there are people already in seats. So there's a person in this seat, and 3, 4, 5, 6, there's a person in this seat. And with that social distancing factor, he stretches his arms or he coughs or whatever it is in a pandemic. The seats 1, 2, and 3 are not available, and seats 5, 6, and 7 are not available. So from visual, just looking at this, you can see that this seat 4 is still available for somebody to sit in that wouldn't break the constraints of this problem. And the seats 8, 9, and 10 are still available. So we'll just go ahead and call these arrays because it's technically what they are. And there's also an empty array here to the left of this first person that's already seated. And it's empty. But if you were to look at this and say, hey, how many people can I fit in these arrays? You can't fit anybody in those seats. But you can fit one person in one seat that still matches the constraints of the problem. And you can fit one person in seat 8 and one person in seat 10 that matches the constraint of the problem where you need to have a social distancing factor of 1 between them. And so the total answer to this solution would be 1 from this seat 4 plus 2 from these seats 8, 9, and 10 plus 0 from the seats before the beginning of the array. Uh, and you get a total of 3. And that's the correct answer. But this doesn't really tell you how to solve this programmatically. So how do we solve it programmatically? Well, first, let's talk about a completely separate problem, and let's get the equation for finding out how many seats, uh, how many people can I put in a set of seats given n and k, ignoring whether or not people still exist in these seats. And the reason we're doing that is because we already have three groups of what we'll call islands of seats where nobody is interrupting them. In other words, we have a group of three continuous seats one continuous seat and zero continuous seats on the left. So here we have n is equal to 5. And let's do some exercises with different values of k. So the default, we're just going to say is k is equal to 0. You have a person in every single seat. And so your value is 5. If k is equal to 1, you have a person in the first seat, nobody in the second, third, fourth, fifth. So your value is 3 and so on and so forth. If we go to k is equal to 2, x, blank, blank, x, blank, and so on and so forth. But there's a way that we can understand what's happening here. No matter what the value of k is, if you have an island of seats that are deemed open, you're guaranteed at least one person can sit in that island of seats because you've designated it as open. It's not breaking the constraints of the rest of the problem. So at least one person can fit. And then to add any more people, you need to skip k before you can add one more. So k seats need to be empty plus that one extra seat for that person. So your equation ends up being 1 plus the number of remaining seats you have over k plus 1. And because there is the potential for you know seats to be a, a rollover or a remainder, we're going to floor this. So even though the number of remaining seats was 4 and k plus 1 of this example was 3, 4 over 3 results in 1.33333. So this is 1 plus 1.333 repeating. But it's floored, so it ends up being 2. And that's the answer, 1 and 2. So this equation, if we want to break it down even further, is 1 plus the floor of n minus 1 over k plus 1 is also equivalent to the ceiling of n over k plus 1. And we're going to use this equation or this equation to perform our math. So given n and k, so there's now an ability to given n, 
comma k, we can spit out some of seats, the seats available. Well, let's call it seats available, right? So now, given n and k meaning a, continu a continuous set of seats, we can now spit out seats available. So looking back at our original problem, if we scroll on up, it actually might help. Uh, rather than having to worry about looking at this visually, this is an n of 1 and a k of 1 because it's still the k of the original constraints of this problem. And this is an n of 3 and a k of 1. If we were to plug these values into the bottom equations, you would still get 1 and 2. And technically, this is an n of 0 and a k of 1. And that's the one place where this equation technically doesn't pan out because 0 minus 1 over k plus 1 floor doesn't really work. It's actually negative 1, so technically it does work. Uh, wow, I didn't even realize that. Um, well, does it? Yeah, it does because it goes to negative 1. So these both would still work. Never mind, I'm all good. Um, but, uh, but the answer still ends up being 0. And so um, th this total would still be 3 from all three sections. And so knowing that we have an equation that we can take numbers n and k, plug it into the equation, and calculate it for each of these three sections, I think we now have a way that we can iterate over this list of seats and break it into subsections of just n's and k's. Rather than having to look at every single seat and check to see if it's already been taken, we can get a little bit more clever with it. Because the problem with checking every single seat is, yeah, sure, for 10 seats, not a big deal. But if you get to millions of seats or billions of seats or trillions of seats, which a lot of these programming problems do have, especially looking at the constraints for this problem, you only have five seconds for the code to run. This is not a time limit to solve it. Uh, no one's that smart. Um, but uh, this is a time limit for the run, the code to run. And so uh, you need to make sure that you're not actually iterating over every single seat in this problem because we just don't have the computing power to do that. And it's also a waste of computing power. So let's get into the code here and maybe talk through how this code is going to work. So the first things first, in English, I've gone ahead and written what happens or what, what the constraints and what the requirements of this problem are. But in English, we're looking for the number of open seats. So how many open seats? are there between each of the already seated people between uh, you know so before the first seated person between them and after the last now there's some fancy programming that we can do here let's not get fancy though let's just use some very basic uh, words here so first things first I've created some parameters, number of seats, social distancing factor, count of seats taken, and seats taken. Uh, these are the equivalent to n, uh, k, and s. Count of, seat ta count of seats taken isn't a variable that we really need to use. It's just the length of s, uh, but it was there in the coding problem, so we just included it there anyways. Um, but the first thing we want to do is we want to have uh, our number of seats taken sorted. And the reason we want to do that is because uh, we are actually looking through the array and we're trying to figure out the number of seats before the first person, that's the first person in the array, between each one, you know, two and six, or uh, and then the, after the last. And so in this example here for my code, I have 11, 6, and 14 are already taken. If we don't sort this first, it's going to be kind of hard for me to figure out who I'm looking between or, or how, I'm, how I'm working through this problem. So if I sort this seats taken array in ascending order, I can make sure that I'm going to figure out the number of people for the first seated person, then between each one, and then after the last. Uh, I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, um, noodle on it for a minute, and, and uh, we'll continue, and it might make more sense as we go. And we're trying to figure out how much extra space we have at our cafeteria table. Uh, we currently have zero because we haven't found any extra space, but we will find some soon. Now, uh, we're always going to start on the first open seat. We're going to identify this first open seat as first open seat of one. So let's go ahead and scroll on down. Let's start a fresh tab here. So we have one. Well, let's get a, a little bit prettier color, too. Might be nice. Uh, well, black isn't. Well, yeah. Anyways, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And our first open seat we're just going to say is this one. We don't actually know if it's open or not, but we're just going to say our first open seat that we're going to assume is open is this spot one. And our first taken seat is going to be two. And so let's turn that in red. Our first taken seat is at two. 
But remember, our first taken seat or the seat that somebody's already in also has a social distancing factor of k is equal to 1 in this problem. So that first taken seat technically fades into that first one. So it gets a little bit funky. But remember, we're iterating over our taken seats to calculate this problem. So let's actually just go ahead and, and uh, create a first taken seat in seats taken. Um, eh, well, we don't even need to call it the first taken seat. We'll just call it taken seat. and and Because technically, we're only going to look at the first taken seat once, and then we'll move on to the next taken seat. But because we're operating in sequential order, we're always going to be looking at the most recent one or the closest one to where we are. Um, but anyways... Uh, we're going to go through here and we want to find out how many open seats there are between our starting first open seat and the first seat or the taken seat in our array or our list that's coming in of people who are already sit sitting down. So we're going to go ahead and take that taken seat. So at seat two, we're going to say we're going to take this and plug it into our equation. And we want to figure out how many seats back are still taken or are still blocked off. That's the social distancing factor. So we're going to subtract the social distancing factor. And then we're going to find the distance between the, the blocked off seat, the furthest left seat that's blocked off, and our first open seat. And unfortunately, in this first example, our taken seat is 2, our social distancing factor is 1, and our first open seat is 1. So the number of open seats is 0. So if open seats is 0, we don't do anything with it. But let's work on our next example. If open seats is greater than 0, what do we do? Well, we know that our extra space is equal to that equation, the ceiling of number of open seats divided by our social distancing factor plus one. So that's how much extra space we would get from that open seat. And whether or not there is an open seat or not, we're going to go ahead and look at, uh, we're going to say we now have our next first open seat because we've already looked at between, uh, we've already looked at these two sections between you know, the second taken seat and the left. Now we need to look at the next section. So let's maybe make this a little bit more clear. We've already looked at this chunk. Now we need to look at this chunk all the way to, is this six? Two, so that's four, five, six. So now we need to look at this chunk. So this whole section right here. And we need to figure out how many open seats we have there. So our first open seat is no longer seat one. It is now going to become this seat two plus its social distancing factor, because again, that's not an open seat, plus one. So we're gonna go ahead and add our current taken seat plus our social distancing factor plus one. And now our first open seat in our array that we've not processed yet is here, and we can repeat that process. And so let's go ahead and we go back up to this next taken seat, which is six. 6 minus the social distancing factor of 1 minus the first open seat, which currently is seat 4, gives you one open seat. And hey, that actually tracks with above that one open seat here of seat 4 is just one open seat. And so there, one open seat, if you do the math, that ceiling gives you one extra space, so on and so forth. But, but that's not the whole thing. We've already gone through all of our seats taken. What about the seats after the sixth spot, you know, after seat six. How do we calculate that? Well, we have three remaining seats over here because after seat six, the next first open seat is actually seat eight. You know, we'll skip one from the social distancing factor and then plus one. Starting at seat eight, how do we calculate that? Well, first things first, let's go ahead and let's update our, uh, our open seats. So the number of open seats we now have is going to be open seats is equal to n plus 1, which is the length of our array, plus 1 minus the first open seat. Now, why am I adding 1 here? There's, there's a couple reasons. n plus 1 is at 10. Our first open seat is at 8. Because we're, we're doing a subtraction, this is technically going to be considered an exclusive n. 10 is technically excluded here. So if you move it to 11, 11 minus 8 will give you three, the number of remaining open seats. Um, a little bit of fancy, it's not really fancy math, a little bit of math finagling here. Uh, and n is actually seats, no, it's uh, a number of seats in here. I forgot what I labeled up here. 
And so the number of open seats we now have is 11, or sorry, 10 plus 1 is 11 minus the first open seat, which should now be 8, and that should give us 3. And again, if open seats is greater than or equal to 0, our extra space plus equals, I should include a plus here, because uh, it's not just equals to, it's plus equals, and it's the exact same thing. The exact same equation, we could technically push this into a function, but it's, it's pretty condensed as it is. It might make not as much sense to do that. We're just gonna return the extra space. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in that exact example. We have 10, one social distancing factor, two, and this is two and six. And let's walk through this problem to see how it works. So let's go ahead and let's debug it. That debug is a Python file. So seats taken contains two and six. It's now sorted, that's fine. Uh, extra space is zero, first open seat is one. Our first taken seat is two. Our open seat should be two minus one, minus one gives you zero. Open seats is not greater than zero, so it should skip it. And our next first open seat should be two plus the social distancing factor plus one, which would now be four, good. Tech taken seat is six minus one minus four, should give you open seats of one, perfect. So our code seems to work in the way we expect it. Let's go through. Now our taken seat of six, we don't have anything else. Open seats should be equivalent to the number of seats, 10 plus one minus eight. Perfect. And our result should be three, which matches our expectations. So let's go ahead and let's copy this code in. Let's toss it onto the site that they provide us. And let's hope, well, I can't change that, can I? No, I can't, so we gotta change this to N. Uh, hold on, let's, let's go ahead and let's refactor this. So we'll right click, rename symbol, N. That didn't help. We'll just do this. We'll just go through real quick and we'll change all of these. Good fun. Count of seats taken. That doesn't really matter. Social distancing factor gets changed a few. So this is K, 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 and uh, for taken seat in S, I think is the last one. I guess that shouldn't really matter. Yeah, this should work if we paste this in there now. So let's go ahead and paste it in here. And I think we're gonna need to also do import math. Yeah, import math. Let's test this real quick. And come on, give us the validation. Tell us it worked. It aired out. Int has no attribute sort because we're sorting S, of course. and social distancing factor is not defined. I'm gonna lose my mind. Here's the problems you run into with changing variables. There we go, okay, so it passed our test cases. Here's the big one. Is it gonna pass all of the test cases? Because we don't know the rest of the test cases. I'm hoping yes. There it is, oh, that's kind of fun. So I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, I hope this explained some thought processes for you. And uh, let me know if you have any other questions, you have some other uh, coding puzzles you'd like me to walk through.